Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, March 21, 2023. The National Commission for Violence Prevention is now developing a 10-year evidence-based national action plan. The report is expected in the upcoming fiscal year and recommendations will be used to institute legislative changes. The strategy will establish a level of governance and best practices that will activate a full national mobilization to control and reduce violence. The aim is to have this as a feature of the society. The process was explained by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during his recent presentation in the budget debate. He indicated that the objective was to create a social and cultural transformation of the Jamaican society and culture away from crime and violence. Once we have this national plan, then we will be able to properly fund and deploy violence interrupters right across the country, psychologists and social workers right across the country to be able to treat with the real problems, not just the symptoms which we see expressed on the surface as crime and violence, but the real problem of hate, of aggression, of low self-esteem, of inability to socio-emotionally regulate, of lack of respect for the inviolability of the physical person, the body of the person, and a lack of respect for life. Prime Minister Holness is giving the assurance that government is working to bring a sustainable solution to crime and violence, which has become a public health epidemic and a threat to the proper functioning of the state. Still in Parliament, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says work is well advanced on the construction of the Port Royal Museum. Completion is projected for the end of May 2023. Following that, the selected operators will build out the museum interior and displays. It is anticipated that the facility will be operational by December 2023. According to Mr. Holness, in 2022, the Port Authority of Jamaica, PAJ, was instructed to develop the East Harbor as a cruise port. The PAJ was also directed to develop the land surrounding West and East Harbors, Titchfield Hill, Navy Island, Boundbrook, and the Folly Lands. This is being done utilizing a public-private partnership framework to construct appropriate hotels, resorts, residences, shops, galleries, and restaurants. The concept is to create a low-density, high-value, sustainable tourism product that is in keeping with the unique character of Portland. This long-term development will be the largest and most ambitious of its type in the region and will bring jobs and opportunity to the people of Portland. The Prime Minister points out that the procurement process for the award of a consultancy contract to develop the master plan for the entire area is complete. The master plan is expected to be ready by September 2023, following which various components will be mobilized. Persons sourcing and using water distributed by private trucking companies are being urged to exercise caution to avoid potential health risks. The warning comes from the Ministry of Health and Wellness as the country is experiencing a meteorological drought. The ministry says water distributed by the National Water Commission, NWC, municipal corporations, or contracted private carriers is usually safe. These trucks are loaded at NWC or municipal corporation approved sources, namely reservoirs, wells, and distribution systems. Therefore, persons and commercial establishments purchasing water independent of the established national agencies must ensure that the providers are registered with the NWC, municipal corporations, and the parish health departments. The Health Ministry stipulates that vehicles transporting potable water must be clearly labeled, sanitized, free of leaks, affixed with clean hoses and fittings, and properly covered. Where a consumer is in doubt or the source cannot be verified, disinfecting of the water should be considered. Water can be treated by heating until it comes to a rolling boil with large bubbles continuously coming to the surface and maintained for three minutes. The St. James Health Department has extended its mop-up catch-up campaign until August 2023, as the Ministry of Health and Wellness moves to get more children immunized. The campaign supports the ministry's routine immunization program for the mandatory vaccines, targeting children who should have been vaccinated but for some reason missed their appointments. The Public Health Immunization Regulations of the Public Health Act specifies that all children under the age of seven years must be adequately immunized before entering school. 
Children are being vaccinated against specified preventable diseases such as smallpox, pertussis or whooping cough, polio and tetanus or lockjaw. They are also immunized against diphtheria, measles, mumps, rubella and congenital rubella syndrome, hemophilus, influenza type B, hepatitis B and tuberculosis. Parents and guardians are being encouraged to ensure that children are immunized at the appropriate age levels. And finally, hundreds of students from high schools and colleges were recently exposed to 150 different professions within the tourism industry. The event was a Tourism Career Expo put on by the Jamaica Center for Tourism Innovation, JCTI, earlier this month. The expo featured exhibitions from various tourism stakeholders who exposed students to the variety of career options available to pursue. Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett encouraged the students to take advantage of the new tourism space as careers have moved beyond the traditional options. What we want to expose you to is an infinite capacity to do, to be, to achieve to innovate and to convert the knowledge and information that you get at school into practical, meaningful, material activities and actions that have a price and a value. Minister Bartlett added that tourism was the engine of Jamaica's economic growth. Here in Jamaica, before COVID, Tourism contributed directly 10% of the GDP. And we employed some 20% of the workforce. But we provide over 50% of the foreign exchange that Jamaica requires. And we have been responsible for growth of some 36% over the last 10 years. The expo was organized by the Tourism Enhancement Fund, an agency of the Ministry of Tourism that is responsible for the growth and development of the sector. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.